Hello everyone and welcome to the first video of the Geometry First Semester Exam Review. We decided it would be nice for y'all to have videos of each problem being explained and so that way you can skip ahead or find the video that you need if you're struggling with a problem and how to set it up or how to solve it. And so the first thing I noticed in number one is that there's no picture like in number two and number three. There's no diagram there. So I always tell my students if in doubt we're always going to draw it out. So it says point B is between A and C. Use the segment addition postulate to solve for x. So there's no picture, so I'm going to draw it out. Uh, when you're sketching it, this is just a rough picture, which means it's okay if your values aren't exactly accurate. We're not sure where B is yet, but we're just going to throw it on there somewhere between point A and point C. So it wants us to use the segment addition postulate, which means we're going to be adding pieces of a segment together. If A to B is 5x plus 2, okay? A to C, which is this whole thing, is 12x plus 7, and then it says b to c is 26, so put all of those in the picture. And if you struggle with the segment addition postulate, sometimes it helps to color code. So I'm going to do this in colors. I'm going to call segment a b my blue segment. I'm going to call segment b c my pink segment, and I'm going to call the whole thing my yellow segment. So in colors, the segment addition postulate is really easy to see. It just says piece plus piece equals the whole. And so what I get to do is I get to do blue plus pink equals yellow. So I'm going to write that out with algebra. That would be 5x plus 2 plus 26 equals 12x plus 7. So now I'm just going to combine some like terms. Um, I've got 5x plus 28 equals 12x plus 7. And so we want to get our variables on the same side. So I'm going to be going through the math on this pretty quick. If you are struggling with the algebra, come see one of us. We would be happy to help you. Come see one of your math teachers. We're going to divide by 7 on both sides and we get x equals 3. And I'm just going to give you a pro tip. I am like the queen of rushing through stuff and not making sure I actually answered the question. Um, all this problem wanted us to do was solve for x, which I just did. So I get to stop there. Be careful on a multiple choice test. Um, it would be really easy for us to ask you to go back and actually like find the value of AB. So if we did that, I just want to go and plug X into um, 5X plus 2. Um, so just make sure you're paying attention to what the question is asking for. This one only asked us to solve for X, so I'm looking for the answer that is 3. If it wanted me to go back and um, find a different piece, then you'd have a little bit more work to do. But we were nice to you on this problem. Okay, it tells me that this ray AB bisects which means to cut in half, bisects this angle CAD. And they already have the marks on here, fortunately. And we could add those if not. And that just means that those two angles are going to be congruent. And because those angles are congruent, I can set their measures equal. So I can come in and set the expression 4x minus 2 equal to 3x plus 6. And again, we're just going to get our variables on the same side. Um, it said find the value of x. That's what I just did. And so I get to stop there. If I wanted to make sure I did it right, I could go back and plug it in on a test. You're definitely going to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Plug it in and check, even if they didn't ask you to. 4 times 8 is 32, minus 2 is 30 degrees. And then 3 times 8 is 24, plus 6 is also 30 degrees. So I know that I did this problem correctly. All right, number three, this is a vertical angles problem. This is like what looks like the bow tie to me. I get I have two lines intersecting at a point, and that creates these vertical angles. The vertical angles theorem tells me that ang uh, vertical angles are congruent to each other, and so I can set their measures equal. So 85 will be equal to 3y minus 5. I'm going to add 5 to both sides and then divide by 3. All at once is the value of y, which is what I just found. But again, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Plug it in. Make sure you did it right. 3 times 30 is 90 minus 5 would, in fact, also be 85 degrees. So we know we did that problem right. All right. In this four-sided shape, H, I, J, K, it tells me that 7x minus 2 um, is congruent to, let's see, that I'm sorry, that H, K is congruent to I, J. And so we know that those expressions um, that are listed, we can set those equal mathematically. So I can take 5x plus 3 and set it equal to 7x minus 2 because the length of HK is going to be equal to the length of IJ since those segments are congruent. So again, I'm going to go through the algebra rather quickly, and so that would give me 2.5 for my value of x. It says, what is the value of x? So check yourself. That is what we found. But you could always go through and plug it in and make sure. 5 times 2.5 plus 3 is going to be the same thing as 7 times 2.5 minus 2. 
All right, number five says solve this equation. So this is just a one-step equation, and it's saying how would, what is that one step? Choose the property that applies to the required step. So if I wanted to get x by itself, if I wanted to get x by itself, I would need to um, get rid of the plus 12. So since I need it to cross the equal sign, I'm going to do the inverse operation um, when it, whenever we solve for x. So x is 12. That was using the subtraction property of equality. I just subtracted the same amount from both sides. Number six, again, doesn't have a picture, so you can always draw that if you would like to. But it says that two angles are supplementary. Rem uh, remember that supplementary means that an angle, a pair of angles add up to 180. So it says if the first angle is 67 degrees, what is angle two? That is where you're going to take 180 degrees and you're going to subtract um, the supplement. And the, so the supplement of 167 is going to be 113 degrees. Together, those would make a straight line. All right, number seven. Number seven. Um, number seven wants you to solve for x and for y. So the first thing I do is I highlight the variables um, that are the same. So that way I can see where those angles are at. So both of these yellow angles, those are bow ties, have an x in them, whereas this blue angle has a y in it. So we're going to look at what kind of angles are the yellow set. And that is going to be vertical angles. And the vertical angles theorem tells me that I can set those measures equal. So I'm going to do that now. And then I'm going to use some distributive property. This problem requires you to solve for x before you solve for y. So that's going to be plus 30. And we get 2x equals 50. So x must be equal to 25. And so we found the first. It said solve for x and for y. So if it just wanted me to solve for x, I would stop there. x is 25. But I also need to solve for y. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that 25 and we're going to go back and we're going to plug it in. And so when I plug that in to either of these yellow pieces, um, I'm going to get 5 times 25 minus 4, which is 21, which I believe is 105 degrees. Why does that help me? Well, because the yellow and the blue angle together add up to 180. So that forces this blue angle to be 75. So now I can take 3y minus 15 and set it equal to 75 degrees. I get 3y equals 90. And so y would have a value of 30. Y would be 30. Okay. Let's do the next page two on this one. Um, again, a little bit more multiple choice practice. It says in the diagram, angle four and angle five are what kinds of angles? Well, the first thing I notice is that they're on the inside of these parallel lines. Um, we don't know for sure that they're parallel, but they're on the insides of those lines. And then they're on opposite sides of the transversal, which is alternate. So those are going to be alternate interior angles. Four and five are alternate interior. And if the lines are parallel, then they're congruent. Okay. This next picture has two triangles. It's got a blue right triangle, and then it's got a pink triangle on top. And it wants me to find the measure of angle one, which is in the pink triangle on top. Unfortunately, all I have in the pink triangle on top is this 32 degree angle, and I don't know this angle right here. But if we use the other triangle, we can find that angle because those are vertical angles. So this pink triangle is actually a right triangle as well. I get to copy that angle here. That was my ticket in. And so when I want to find the value of um, angle one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 180, which is my um, the interior angle sum of a triangle, and I'm going to subtract 90 and 32 to see how much is left for this angle. And so when I do that, I'm going to get 58 degrees. So the measure of angle 1, which is what we wanted to find, is 58 degrees. All right, number 10. Find the value of x when a is parallel to b. So if these are parallel, then these click into place, and these two angles that it has an expression for are going to be corresponding. Corresponding angles are angles that sit in the same corner. So when I say corner, I always explain it to my students like it's like a group of people sitting around a table. The people sitting in this top right corner of this set are going to be in the same spot as the people sitting in the top right corner as this set. So I get to take my expression and I get to set it equal because the measure of those angles must be equal. Um, since they are corresponding, they're going to be congruent to each other. And so I would add 3 to both sides. I'd get 68. And then you divide by 4 on both sides. Um, 68 divided by 4 is going to give me 17. 17. I said find the value of x, so that's where I get to stop. I didn't want me to plug it in or find anything else. 
Number 11, number 11 says what value of A, so I'm looking for the value of A, I'm gonna go ahead and put a box around it to make sure I come back to that, would make these lines parallel. So if these lines are gonna be parallel, then these angles, what kind are they? 5A and 145, first I notice they're both obtuse. Um, so these are alternate exterior angles. And if alternate exterior angles are congruent, their measures are equal, then that means that the lines are gonna be parallel. So I can divide by five on both sides and I get 29. If A is equal to 29, then boom, this is also 145. The lines click into place, they lock into place and they're parallel to each other. If A is anything bigger or anything smaller than 29, then those lines would not be parallel to each other. Those yellow lines would not be parallel. All right, this next problem says in this diagram, CD, is the perpendicular bisector of this segment AB. Again, they do not tell you that for funsies. There's a reason they're telling you that. Perpendicular means it crosses at a right angle. Bisector means it crosses at the midpoint. And we learned the perpendicular bisector the, uh, theorem the other day, which says that if a point lies on the perpendicular bisector, which point C does, then the distance from, the distance from that point to the end of the segment, so from C to A, is gonna be the same length as from C to B. So those two segments are going to be congruent to each other. Why does that help me solve for the value of X? Because I can set three times X plus eight equal to seven X minus four. Those lengths will be um, equal to each other, equal in length. And so I'm gonna use the distributive property. I get three X plus 24 equals seven X minus four. I'm gonna get my variables on the same side, and then I'm gonna divide by um, four on both sides, and I get seven. All it wanted was the value of x, so that's where I get to stop. It didn't make me go back and plug in and find the lengths of either legs. All right, we're gonna stop on this very last one after we do this problem. This is Taylor Swift's favorite number, so I feel like it's a good place to stop, number 13. X is congruent to A, so I'm gonna color code that in the picture. You all know I'm the queen of color coding. So if x is 15, that means that the measure of a is also going to be 15. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that down. Usually it helps. Okay. Then they tell me that uh, z and c are congruent. So this outside angle, z and c are the same. So I'm going to copy a 35 over here as well. And it wants to know what is the value of x. What is the value of x? So I'm going to look real quick. The value of x, or x, where they have x sitting, is right here. And so that is going to be corresponding to angle Y. And so now, since I've copied everything across, I can go 180, 180 minus 15 minus 35. When I do that, 180 minus 15 minus 35, I get 130 degrees, which is what is left for both of these angles. But that's not what they wanted. They didn't want to say what is the measure of angle B. They said what is the value of X. So I can take 5X minus 15 and set it equal to 130. So 5X equals 145. 145 divided by 5 should be 29. So it says what is the value of X. Now I have found the value of X. And so I am done with that problem. So there will be more videos that follow this one um, for the other problems. So stay tuned.